Good evening, everybody. It is Tuesday night. It's a little bit after eight o'clock <laughs> and we are doing Musar class and we have been studying uh, It's All the Same to Be by Ra Rabbi Moshe Gerst. And I'm very excited for tonight. So last week we had to stop kind of in the middle of chapter one, middle towards the end, because, you know, we were having zoom problems but we've got our zoom problems fixed so tonight hopefully we can finish chapter one and do chapter two if we have enough time so i'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with everybody whoops there we go i want to this Okay, so everybody should be able to see the screen. Um, so <clears throat> according to my assistant, <laughs> um, we left off with um, Hishtavos is living in harmony with all of life. Uh, life is happening and stops for no one. And it's been said that God is life in action. And I love how our author compares these two things. But he says, when Moshe asked Hashem who he should tell the people um, that, you know, is sending him, Hashem's answer was, I am that I am. And our author makes a direct connection to, you know, I, you know, I will be who I will be. But in the same way, it's life is what it is, you know. Um, things will be as they will be. And to live in denial of that is to deny the presence of God. To live in harmony with that, uh, with that truth is to live in the presence of God. And it, it makes me think of um, Enoch. You know, he, he walked with God for 300 years and then he was no more. He never died. He just wasn't there anymore, right? living um in harmony with the truth of life will be as it will be or god will be as he will be is that walking with god living in harmony with his presence and it makes me think of someone who's surfing because they're they're going with the waves or along the waves <laughs> they're not fighting the waves you know so in the same way we shouldn't be fighting life <clears throat> Hishtavos is to enter into a conscious alignment with a higher order. There is a deeper intention behind everything that occurs, literally everything. Nothing ends with what we see on the surface. Okay. There is always more behind the scenes. And a lot of times the fact that we think that the way we perceive things is the end all be all of everything that usually ends up causing us problems as we're going to discover there um the creator sustainer and director of all life as it unfolds has intentions of the highest good and love and to be honest that is really what the crux of faith and trust in god is is believing that he has the intentions of the highest good and love we only see a small fraction of reality, to be honest. And living with equanimity, you will find a hidden harmony, a sacredness, a higher order in which the knowing, the known, and the knower are one. <clears throat> Fertile ground for wisdom, freedom, and space for compassion and love. And there is an ease within which we see the bigger picture. <clears throat> It's being able to hold this space for unlimited potential and infinite possibility in an inner knowing that all things lead to the right direction, whether or not in full, it will unfold according to how we think it should. And I put, I picked this picture of two people, two sets of footprints on the beach, because again, the whole thing with Enoch, how he walked with God. He walked in this, this, his right? So let's keep going. 
<clears throat> his job was just recognizing the love that exists everywhere. The energy of all things and events are flooded <clears throat> with a loving presence of the creator, despite their outer appearances. Um, it's possible to literally feel the connection between you and all other creation. All is part of love. Uh, the love story being told by God. Love is at the epicenter of creation. In fact, so many, you know, people have touted, you know, almost as a slogan, God is love, you know. It says a lot right there. Hishtavus is a state of allowing. Um, to allow things to happen without inner resistance is not weakness, it's strength. Non-resistance doesn't mean letting people walk all over you or letting your house burn down. Whatever is happening, instead of wishing it were different, you allow it to be exactly as it is. Then um, take action. Wow, Miss Philbert, sorry. Take action from that place of allowing. So the pictures I chose here <clears throat> is this, you know, IDF soldier who's rapping to feel in and praying. Well, you know, he's more than likely not in a position of um, liking the situations that he's having to deal with. In fact, I intentionally chose one uh, that was very recent, a picture of a soldier that it was very recent. So, you know, this man is not going through ideal situations, but he is embracing Hashem which is that accepting of, of what he has to face. You know, this person taking this humongous boulder up the hill, how much harder would this task be if they were like, man, I hate that I'm here. And their whole focus and mindset was on, I don't like this, right? And this person here in the bottom picture is this woman looking at this whole huge, crazy, looks like a mess, but if you notice her shadow is like a superhero. And the reason I chose that is because instead of looking at the mess going, oh my gosh, this is unbelievable. I can't believe I have to deal with all this craziness. Instead, she's looking at this going, okay, this is what I've been given. And I can, I can do what God has put me here to do. And that right there is that superhero quality. <clears throat> His job is, is a state of surrender. You know, believe it or not, some of these pictures are actually hard to find. <laughs> I tried to find a picture of surrender that didn't look like um, a bunch of guys sitting at a table, right? Because, you know, when you surrender, you're not necessarily in ideal situation, right? You're not in an ideal environment. You might not be dressed to the nines in your dress blues. Um, you might be on the field of battle. You might be in a crazy hot mess, waving that white flag, right? Although we associate with surrender with a negative charge or loss, surrender is a powerful door opener for peace, love, and harmony. I know you're thinking, how can that possibly be? But we, when we constantly uh, fight with reality, there is never enough time, never enough money. We're always doing things we wish we weren't doing. When that's the case, we're not surrendered. To surrender means to let go of how you think things should be and accept them as they are. I'm pretty sure that there are lots of people in any situation where there is a war or battle going on. And when they have to surrender, they're like, man, I don't want to be in this position. Nobody does, right? But you surrender or you know that worse things will happen, like loss of life even more, like your life, right? So sometimes you have to do the things you don't want to do in order to move on to the next bigger and better thing. <clears throat> Hishtavus is a space inside of us that allows creativity. And I love I loved looking for these pictures. This was, this was also very difficult, but it was cool. Um, sameness is that place where connection and flow happens. Sameness is not a form of doing. Sameness is a space, an inner stillness that allows for, for and fosters authentic connection. 
It is that silence out of which a song is born, the quiet from which breakthrough and epiphanies emerge. And if you think about it, <clears throat> God said, let there be light in Genesis 1-3. He said it and it came into being. He is the ultimate creator. He is the ultimate inventor, the ultimate artist. And, you know, trying to find pictures that depict that creativity is, is so difficult. But um, I figured this one with the uh, colors and, and the blindfold on it was a good, good image of this. And then this one here that almost kind of looks like a God blowing life into man. That, that was pretty cool too. Anyways, <clears throat> Hestavos is seeing through the lens of oneness. Um, according to Kabbalah, the highest state of consciousness is Yehuda, or sorry, Ye Yehida, sorry, which means oneness. Um, Hishavos is seeing life through this lens of oneness. Instead of division, we uh, see unity. Um, instead of separation, togetherness. Instead of difference, sameness, right? And so I chose this picture because it looks like a contact lens or an eyeball, but it also looks like the earth. We are all one. We are all the people that God has created and where he's, he's made space for us to live within his being. And I also chose this, these really cool glasses. I don't know if you guys have seen the movie. Um, um, oh gosh. Oh, no, I can't remember the name of the movie. <laughs> All right. So it was, um, they're supposed to be the glasses that Benjamin Franklin had created and uh, National Treasure. That's the name of the movie. And if you looked at uh, this document, they had found, depending on the color lenses you looked through, that would change what you could see. And so when you think about the changing the lens that you're looking through, it's another way of saying I'm changing my perspective, right? You can easily stand in one place and say, oh, well, I see this. And somebody stands opposite you and says, oh, I see this. The thing is, is you're both right. You both see a different angle of this thing, but it's being able to put yourself in into as much of the perspective that Hashem has as possible. And that's where you start to see that oneness. Hishtavus does not mean repressing your emotions. It is not about denial of a situation or your emotions um, about the situation. It's about accepting each situation for what it is and dropping all resistance because denial leads to more pain. And this is actually a picture that I use in my job quite often. Um, but it shows you, they, it was a study that was done where um, they used a CAT scan to take the image of a body experiencing different emotions. And so it's about how your body lights up and cools down when you're experiencing different emotions. And it's, the whole point is, is that when you're in that, state of equanimity that his job is you're not denying how you feel you you still feel those things but you're looking at what's happening and you're able to kind of step back just like um our previous book you know um you revealed when he talked about being able to look at what you're thinking it's almost like that where you can step back and you can see the situation in front of you and say, okay, this is the situation. I don't like it very much, but this is what it is. And I'm going to do the best I can and make my best choices. And when I have that moment where I can sit for a second and it would be appropriate for me to embrace the emotions that I have right now, I will do so, but at this moment in time, maybe it's a car accident and I don't have the time to be emotional about the car accident, but I can do that later on. Or maybe um, maybe your relative wins the lottery and you're so happy for them. Um, 
and maybe a little bit jealous and but you're not going to be jealous in front of them right there you're going to congratulate them you're going to bless them for how god has blessed them and then when you have that moment to address your emotions you can because a lot of times your emotions are not what you think they are we will get to that later in the in the book though Hishtabus does not mean you always feel amazing. So I loved this picture because you see at the top, the waves are, are like bouncing all over the place, but down below the waves, down below the surface, look at all that calm, look at all that peace. So even, even though the top or the surface is craziness going on, it's Hishtabus is having that peace under the surface. You will not always feel fantastic. Some things will make you um, happy and others sad. With sameness, this is all on the surface. While behind them, you rest in a deep sense of peace, presence, and love. The capacity to maintain an open, connected state, free from emotional turbulence, no matter what daily chaos and challenges you face. So life is God in action. And I mean, trying to capture pictures of what is life is craziness. Um, you know, you might be a student in class. You might be family cooking dinner. You might be walking through a busy city street, playing games with your siblings, out enjoying nature. Uh, you might be a senior citizen getting ready to celebrate the holidays. You might be having Hanukkah, um, Hanukkah time with your kiddos during Hanukkah. You could be the butterfly out in nature, you know. Life is God in action. And if you think about this, all these things are different representations of life. And life is God in action. That's a huge concept. Being in harmony with life allows you to see love and opportunity everywhere. Equanimity allows you to remain centered <clears throat> in the middle of whatever is happening. And I don't know about you guys, but whatever often in my life means chaos. <laughs> Having the ability to remain centered in the middle of chaos is, is amazing. Equanimity gives you balance, strength, and stability. The stillness is deep, a deep presence of inner calm, well-being, confidence, vitality, and integrity. And it keeps us upright in the same way that a ballast keeps a ship upright in strong winds. I had to look up what a ballast is because I thought it was something very different than what it is. But everything I found is more like this diagram. A ballast is allowing a certain amount of ocean water to come into the ship and run through certain areas of the ship in order to keep the ship from um, capsizing. And it's like, it's all about keeping it balanced and allowing whatever that, you know, water source is to flow through the ship. I don't know. I mean, that's a pretty good uh, analogy there the author gave. Um, this is an invitation of freedom, sowing its seeds, water it, and it will allow it to grow. So simply put, all is equal. It is all the same. All is one. All is good. All is love. There is no difference. No separation. And I know some people are like, how is that possible? I see difference and separation everywhere. Well, we'll get there. Slow down. <laughs> so questions to ask yourself. Do these seven qualities resonate within you as something that you have personally experienced? If you have, what was the catalyst? If not, can you think of what might be holding you back? Are there times when you feel rooted in something so strong that you stay firmly planted when the winds of the world blow. The most important book to study is the journal of your heart. Yay, chapter two. 
Okay, so in chapter two, we're going to talk about the secret switch. And the picture I chose was this man climbing the mountain, uh, just juxtaposed with the man like, yay, I made it, victory, right? So how do we get there? How do we get from this man struggling to this man who's having victory? Living with an inner yes. When we cultivate this attitude, um, this attitude of non-resistance and non-attachment, we feel more confident in everything we do. Living with an inner yes equals no matter what shows up for you in your life, instead of fighting it, you choose to say, yes, this is what's happening. It's not saying, yes, I like it, or yes, I don't like it. It's saying, yes, this is happening. Equanimity says, yes. It doesn't have to be enthusiastic or excited, just a simple inner yes. Yes, this is what's happening now. Instead of getting frustrated with traffic, choose to see it as the same Choose to see it as time to listen to a podcast or call a person you haven't talked to in a while. And I chose these really cool pictures of perspective because this is how we start to figure out how to say yes, right? Um, in the top left picture, we have the person spraying an aerosol can and it looks like he's spraying clouds into the sky. Well, we all know that those clouds were already there and he just put his hand in front of it and took a picture. But the thing is, is that the way that, that they did this, it made it look like he really is spraying clouds into the sky. In other words, you can change how you view it by trying to see it differently. The next picture over is... Um, and hot air balloon. And it looks like a man is holding it in his hand. You're like, wait, how can he possibly be holding that? I mean, that, that thing's huge. Again, it's choosing to look at it differently. The one on the bottom left is one of my favorite pictures. It looks like the, the tree is like an arm holding the moon, <laughs> but it's not, it's just the angle of the picture was taken. And then the one on the bottom right, again, it looks like a man is about to swallow the sun. Um, and is being pushed in his mouth by his friend. But it's just, again, the angle at which the picture was taken. The thing is, is that if we can change how we see things, flip that perspective, then we can say, okay, I might not see all the picture or all the pieces of the picture yet, but I can acknowledge that, yes, this is happening right now. And I can make my best choices because I can see what is happening and that I choose to maintain my inner peace, even though my emotions are not so happy, or maybe they are really happy. <clears throat> so again, we're going to do, you know, a couple of things here we've seen before, switching perspectives with a different lens. You may experience that life is just what life has just presented you with, it, uh, with a gift, you know, um, instead of seeing the, the tragedy of a situation, you can see the benefit or the, the good outcome or Instead of seeing how it's so frustrating to you right now, again, maybe it's it's time to listen to a podcast because you're stuck in traffic or maybe the tire blew and that meant that you weren't at work for something that you really didn't need to be around. Instead of getting stuck in the stock, you're already into the grain of the day when you can switch this perspective, right? You can choose to see life situations as an assignment that's shown up for you. Instead of resisting and creating that negative energy, accept and even embrace what is happening in a way that allows you to be at peace. Not only will you feel better, but you will make better decisions in the moments that follow. So let's say you did get angry. <laughs> I'm going to move this over real quick so we can see the pictures. So let's say you did get angry. What kind of person are you going to be on the phone if you called someone? If you're feeling angry because you're stuck in traffic, you're probably not going to sound super happy or nice to the person on the phone, right? And, and what would you be feeling once you arrived wherever you're late to? You know, you're probably feeling anxious and, you know, angry and 
super worried about what other people are thinking. And, and that doesn't mean you're going to answer people well or respond well or think things through clearly because you're already in an elevated state. Um, what good would getting angry do to solve the problem? Nothing. It, getting angry in your car because you're stuck in traffic is not going to change one iota of your situation. You're still stuck in traffic. You can choose to sit, be stuck in traffic and, and accept it with equanimity, or you can choose to be stuck in traffic and get angry and make yourself miserable the whole time. Ask yourself, why was I anxious over being late? Why was I upset over when I lost my job? And this last question made me think, because yeah, when you're stuck in traffic, you're afraid. You're afraid you're going to lose your job or you're afraid something's going to happen that you're not going to like, right? And so my top picture here is somebody being angry. But I thought about this, you know, that fear, you know, are you trusting God? Where's your bit of coom, you know? And so I like this little street sign where, you know, straight ahead is trust, but to either side, you've got fear. And Jeremiah 29, um, whoops, wrong button. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. That goes back to that, um, everything Hashem is doing. Even if it if it seems like something we don't like or it's not good or whatever, it's all ultimately for this higher good, for this plan that he is singing out his story. He's telling it with an inner yes to life and life will be saying yes to you. I thought that was pretty cool. Um that over again. There is no, there are no problems, only situations. A problem is a concept that we create in our mind. We decide something isn't good and then it's a problem. Problems come with excessive stress, anxiety, sadness, and fear. It's very easy for us to turn a situation into a problem. Instead of creating more problems, we can choose to see what is happening without the label. You can choose to wage peace within yourself rather than waging war on life. And the things that I chose pictures for is the sign of true or false. Um, Cause this whole concept right here makes me think of something Rabbi Foreman um, said when he was teaching about um, the garden of Eden and, you know, Adam and Eve, in the tree of uh, knowledge of good and evil. And, you know, you have the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, but then you had the tree of eternal life, right? And, and Hashem said, don't eat the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Well, the thing about it is, is before they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they very much thought in lines of true or false, Good and evil are subjective, whereas true or false are objective, right? It, it either is or it isn't. That's true or false. Subjective is I don't like it or I do like it. Well, what someone likes or doesn't like varies from person to person, from day to day, from moment to moment. It's very subjective. Um, so just because you don't, you know, you're going to call broccoli bad because you don't like how it tastes doesn't mean that somebody else doesn't actually love it because they think it tastes great. You know, the whole point of that saying that is that um, when we get caught up in, I don't like this, it's all about that good and evil thing rather than true or false. And I picked this picture here of um, it almost looks like an angel, but it's like one side is all, you know, feathers and stuff. And the other side looks like fire. It's like good and evil. And it's like, well, that is so subjective. Whereas true or false is, is a whole other story. And this, um, picture of all these arrows hitting the bullseye, you know, the whole, um, definition of sin is missing the mark, you know? So let's, 
let's think about, you know, did we hit the mark or not? True or false? Am I a good person or a bad person? Well, that's subjective, right? The choice is yours. Choose to see reality. Feel the feelings that come with reality. Accept reality. And with this comes peace from which you can choose to do something about the situation that life has presented um, you with. So acceptance, I found this, um, whoopsie, sorry. I keep clicking the picture. Acceptance um, is have the life you want by being present in the life that you have. And I also chose this um, picture of someone giving a gift because really that's what life is, right? We're given this opportunity to come to this world and be able to create and change and make and do. This is like a once in, once in a lifetime opportunity, right? And <laughs> I thought, welcome to reality. Enjoy the journey. It definitely is a journey. Um, but I think too, just like, you know, some of our you know, movies have shown, it's like, what is reality? You know, and when you start to think about it and you think, okay, life is God in motion. Reality is whatever God presents us with, right? Wanting. So let's talk about wanting. Um, <laughs> this doesn't mean that we shouldn't want anything. You know, that's not the point. The what we do need is to learn how to want. And instead of assuming that we just know how to want, we need to accept that we need to learn to want in a proper way. Um, usually we engage in what our author calls resistant wanting. If I get what I want, it's good. And I'm happy. Or if I don't get what I want, it's bad. And I'm not happy. So it made me think of like when you see those uh, commercials or news reports or whatever, people on Black Friday and they're all fighting over some stupid material thing. Or you have a girl, you know, wanting a relationship with a boy or, the, of course, the Rolling Stones. You don't always get what you want. <laughs> it's a classic song. Um Psalms 55, 23 says, throw the load you carry onto God and he will take care of you. And when I, when I hear that or read that, I, I always think of those pictures that you see of people in um, other countries who are carrying these immensely heavy load, whether it's on their bike or this guy is carrying it on a, and walking and you're like, man, how are they strong enough to carry that huge load? But the question is, what load are you carrying? What heavy baggage is weighing you down that you carry everywhere you go? Oh, see, I got to move this over again. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So the whole thing is that we need to throw it up to God and know that the highest good will unfold. God will take care of you means that when you can let go of your plans, your desires, and your thoughts and opinions about your life as being absolute, you will be free of your heavy burden. So like, you know, we have this picture of this guy carrying this big, heavy, heavy burden and God taking it from him or offering to take it from him. And this little meme, um, faith is, Trusting God, even when you don't understand his plan. And this, you know, little track this person's walking on is like curving in a way that they shouldn't be able to still walk on it. And this right here looks like to me a person who's like, yep, I'll let you have it, God. Um, here you go. He looks so free. So surrendered wanting. What is surrendered wanting? Um <clears throat> Your ability to be enthusiastic and desire something without being attached to the outcome. That's huge. Think about it. How many times do you try to set about doing a project or doing something that you worked really hard on and you're trying really hard to achieve a certain outcome? 
Well, what happens if after all that hard work, you don't get the outcome that you were striving for? You know, do you just quit and give up on life? Some people do. The thing is, is you're, you are then able to have, so when, when you're able to not be so attached to the outcome, you're then able to have an opinion, um, but also maintain an open mind to accept that you might not know the whole picture. Surrender is not about giving up, but about giving over. So remember, you know, giving that big burden over to God. It's going for what you love and appreciate the process and enjoying the success that, you know, if it comes. And at the same time, it also means embracing the failure because you see it as a part of the bigger success. So the pictures that I chose here, I did as all of them intentionally. <laughs> if you look inside of this watch work, you know, each of these little gears, you know, say that's a person, each little tiny screw, gear, whatever, they do their their job. They do their thing that they were designed to do. They're not all the same size. They don't look all the same, but they all work together to make a watch, a very complicated watch. And the point of this is um, just because they're doing their thing, they don't realize that what they do impacts all of these other little parts. This little screw right here has no clue how important it is to this arm thingy over here, you know? And if you're judging everything that you see in your life from your perspective and you're judging yourself as a failure overall because you're, you know, you might be a good at holding this little part in, but you're not good at spinning like this guy is. Well, you're missing the point. The other thing I put down here is the life process of a rose. So, you know, you have your, your seed, right? Your seed gets planted. Well, seed has to actually die in order for a plant to grow. It starts, a, a new life starts with a death. Well, that sounds a lot like failure to me. I mean, well, he didn't succeed as a seed. He died. But then all of a sudden, this new plant starts growing. And I mean, what if the, the plant at this phase thinks, oh, I'm such a failure because I'm not the beautiful blossoming rose? Well, he's not there yet. Or what if this one here is saying, oh, I'm a failure. My life's over. Wait a minute. You've shown. And now you're moving on to the next stage, which is making that seed that's going to die and make a new life, right? So just because you don't see the whole picture, just because you don't see all the moving parts, this is, this is that I need to surrender and trust God. I have to have that bit of coon and that amuna that Hashem has a plan that's got my best interests at heart. So what is the goal? Well, I can tell you right now, it's not to do nothing and it's not to avoid thinking. It's not to desire nothing and it's not to be nothing. That's all what it's not. It is to let go of the smallness inside of you that keeps you trapped in a valueless opinion of in the value, valueless opinions of your ego. This letting go will allow you to step into your greatness as part of the infinite and hold hands with destiny as you walk through life. It is letting go of how you think things should be and follow the spiritual guidance that always that is always being sent to you. God does so much. I mean, down to every little, little detail, the color of something, the texture of something, the smell of something, every last detail, he's sending it to you. The universe. <clears throat> okay. So in the book, the universe has your back by Gabriel Bernstein. Our author quotes her saying, when you humbly surrender, you begin to receive guidance far beyond your physical sight. Often you'll feel a presence within you 
and around you, guiding your thoughts and feelings. Don't be afraid to dive deeply into the infinite pool of inner wisdom that is available to you now. Open your heart and mind to new perceptions. Allow yourself to, to, to surrender to the flow of love that always guides you. And I put this picture of this man standing in, in a big waterfall of water because he's standing there in the flow right? He's not allowing it to knock him over. He's not, you know, drowning because, you know, he didn't get his way. <laughs> he surrendered. He surrendered to it, allowing the water to flow all over him. In the ethics of our fathers, our author quotes, uh, make his will your will so that he can make your will his will. And the whole point of that is when you align your desire with what is actually happening, your life will begin to unfold in a way that truly fills, fulfills your desires. And again, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. If you really believe that, if you really truly believe that, then you have to get to that point where you will stand in that place of equanimity and recognize, yes, this is happening. That's it. Yes, it's happening. Choice, free will, and the peace of God. Live, uh, live as if you have chosen whatever you feel or experience at the moment. Think about that. Um, it was a couple weeks ago, one of, one of the uh, clients at my clinic knocked my computer across the room and smashed it on the floor. And I was just going, oh, wow, it just flew across the room and smashed it on the floor. And as soon as I was able to collect it up, I just, I knew I couldn't give attention to what this client did. Cause if I gave it that client attention, that client would keep doing it. Because that client does everything for attention. So I collected up my belongings and I promptly left the room. And then I'm sitting there looking at it going, okay, that just happened. And it's almost just like I, I just couldn't go beyond that. That just happened. And, and the rest of that day was quite crazy. By the time I got to the car and, and I could go home, I was just like, God, so much has happened today and I feel crazy. So yeah, it was an it was a really crazy day. But the thing about this is, is I had to choose to, I had to choose to live like, okay, I made this choice. You know, this is, this is the life that I have. I've cho chosen this life. Um, this is the seed of your free will. Your choice begins with how you view your life. So again, we're hitting that perspective, right? You know, is the tree reaching out, grabbing the moon, or is it just a really cool picture of the moon? And the tree is kind of in the way. You know, is this um, is this look like a? It either looks like a um, a feather of a, oh goodness, a peacock feather, or it looks like an eye, but it's cased in in this tree branch. So you know, I mean, again, what it what is it I'm looking at? You know the choice of how you view this life that you live on a moment by moment basis all goes back to whether you can maintain that equanimity in your life. No outcomes are yours and all outcomes are good. Oh, wow. Really? All outcomes are good. I can think of several outcomes I wouldn't feel are very good, but our author is saying, no, actually they're all good. Why? Because we're not in control of our outcomes, are we? We're in control of our effort. We're in control of how we choose to view it. We're not in control of our outcomes. In this lies the peace of God, recognizing that Hashem is in control of the outcome. So even if what I'm having to go through is terrible, horrible, bad, I can still choose to maintain my peace and allow Hashem to, to create the, the song that he is singing. 
Live as if you have chosen your circumstances. Instead of asking why, ask what can I learn from this? Surrendered wanting doesn't mean to avoid trying. It means to uh, it means to try without being attached to the outcomes. It doesn't mean to avoid doing anything. It means to do everything you can without thinking you're in control of the results. It doesn't mean to avoid thinking. It means to think without fooling yourself that you know the whole picture. And it doesn't mean thinking of yourself as nothing. It means knowing that you are part of the everythingness that is life and you are never separate. And so I I have some juxtaposition pictures here, you know, this guy being successful in business and this guy getting fired, you know, these, these girls bullying this girl at school and this family sitting around playing a game happily together. You know, the whole thing is, is I can take whatever situation I'm given and I choose whether I'm going to say, yes, this is happening and make my best choices and move forward and deal with my emotions when it's the appropriate time to deal with them. Or I can allow the world, the situation to overwhelm me. And surrender is not about giving up. It's about giving over. We all hold too tightly to that which we believe we must control. Investigate where you where in your life you are still holding on to something that you might uh, that you might benefit from surrendering. And you need to ask yourself what matters, you know, what really does matter. Cause you know, the question in the book was, does this mean nothing matters? Well, no. Things that should not matter to you are what happens, what people think of you what you have and what you don't have, your spiritual level and the things that block you from growth. So what should matter? Everything. Everything matters. Nothing can be miscounted. Everything matters, just not in the way you think it does. And again, going back to the swatch, every little piece in here matters. Not every piece is the same. And they may or may not do the function you think it does, but each piece matters. And the watchmaker knows exactly how they're supposed to fit together and how they're supposed to function. But I guarantee you, this little piece here has no clue about how this little piece here is supposed to function. So let's talk about our perspective. Your opinion and judgment of a situation doesn't matter in that they are often incorrect and biased by your limitations. Your opinions of what is good or bad has no bearing on the reality of the situation. And the way that you see things does not include, oops, sorry, (laughs) does not include the whole picture. We know this because if you did see the whole picture, Nothing would contradict the things that you see. So this first picture I have here is of a grain of sand. One single teeny tiny grain of sand. And it's, you know, of course, a magnified view. But what if we back out and we see the whole beach full of these tiny little grains of sand, right? What if we back out even further than that? We see the whole planet. It's all about perspective. And you can choose to only see that grain of sand, or you can choose to learn how to back up and see the the beach and back up even further and see the whole planet and even further than that and see the solar system and the whole nine yards. Changing perspective often helps you figure out how can I maintain my peace and still deal with what is going on in front of me. Okay, so let's talk about should. (laughs) Some situations are opposite of how you thought they should be. Ask yourself how often the word should is causing you pain and creating problems. In truth, if there is a problem, it's because in that moment, I, you, we are not walking with God. I, you, we 
have forgotten what it means to be in this world. When you lose your stillness, you lose touch with your inner self. And when you lose touch with your inner self, you can lose yourself in the world. This is not fatalism. It's freedom. So what we're talking about here is instead of saying should, this is not what's supposed to happen. This is, shouldn't be going on right now. Or this should be like this. <laughs> instead of hanging on to the shoulds, we need to just be able to step back and say, yep, this just happened. My tire just blew. I just ran out of gas. I just ran out of groceries. Whatever, whatever is happening. This is what's happening. How am I going to answer what is happening? Or how am I going to conduct myself through this situation now? Everything matters, just not the way you think it does. So we create and sustain and direct our own pain through our attachment to fear and our desires. We can also create, sustain, and direct our joy and peace through letting go and moving back into harmony with our higher selves. The choice is what the choice is what it means to be made in the image of God. Happy are the people that for them this is so. It's from one of the Psalms. Can we live with this is so? The happy ones are those who can live and be at peace with an attitude of this is so. They have learned to let go and flow. And this is sameness. So the pictures I chose here is you've got this one guy on the beach and these waves look like they're about to crash down on him. And it's dark. This person up here, she's standing in the water. The waves are are calm they're still coming but they're definitely not going to knock her over and the question is you know whether you're in this state of calm you know your life at this moment is this kind of calm serene or your life is this oh those waves are going to come down and smash me whichever one are you able to maintain that this is so Yay! That's the end of chapter two. So let me stop the sharing. Oops, not pause. It's only right in front of me. All right. That was the end of chapter one and all of chapter two. And next week, we will start chapter three, which, does he give us a table of contents in here? I don't remember if he did. Yes, we have a table of contents. Chapter three is setting down your mind. So do we have any comments or anybody want to say anything that they've observed or or that hit them particularly or whatever this was a fun journey tonight oh i'm glad <laughs> i'm just so impressed by your pictures it um i'm a very visual learner and so all of these pictures just really open up things for me i really appreciate that oh i'm so glad one picture I saw wrong, though. It was just weird. I'll tell you about it later. It's just crazy. <laughs> it's all about perspective, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You get the picture? Yeah. It was, it was great. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Ah. Uh, but, but yeah, the lessons were just really awesome. You know, life can really throw you around. I, I yeah. know we both know that, but, you know, especially lately <laughs> the things have been kind of crazy yes and uh yeah i've been thinking a lot about israel too and what they're going through and and it's just it can't see it 
almost seems impossible, you know, for it to be so horrible. And yet we're only seeing a tiny, tiny little piece of what exactly. is exactly, exactly. You know, and, and, and yeah. our author will address tragedy later on. Um, because I know that that's got to be um, on every thinking person's mind. Yeah, you're saying all of this is for the good. Well, how is all of this craziness for the good? Yeah. Yeah. Just but, but, give yourself a chance to absorb all the other parts and we will get to that part. So. Right. Right. But you see people waking up to, you know, life is serious and I need I need God. Yeah. In my life, you know, so many people just kind of woke up to that. Well, and when you hear people talking about walking with God, it's like, well, what do you mean? Yeah. And I feel that our author here has a really good explanation of that. Walking with God is being able to maintain your equanimity. It's being able to, mm -hmm. to have that sense of his job is where you're, yes, the world around you is going topsy-turvy, but inside of yourself, you're able to maintain that calm. How? How do you do that? We get, we'll get there. But a lot of it has to do with how you choose to use your emotions. Mm -hmm. Only with knowing that God is in control of it all. It always goes back to that bit of coon and that amuna. Yeah, it really does. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody, I have so um, enjoyed being able to do this um, chapter with you guys tonight. Hopefully this Shabbos, you will be able to join us at Maganishianu um, at 10 a.m. Central Time in Bedford, Texas. And I'm hoping that everybody's getting ready for a lovely Hanukkah. Yes. Um, I know <laughs> that Maganishianu is having a um, Havdala slash Hanukkah party on um, Saturday evening after after um, Shabbos is over. So I can't wait to see everybody there. Um, but please do uh, join us next week at 8 p.m. Central Time for um, Chapter 3. Yay. Yay. We'll see you then. Yay. Thank you.